crossed into Germany, and on the 7th of May, the Nazis signed an unconditional surrender. The war in Europe was over. The following day was declared VE Day, and hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets to celebrate the end of the war. Well, when peace was declared, I had to take a mosquito from the south to Aldergrove in Ireland. But I didn't know peace. That was the day that the one o'clock news said we were now at peace. Well, I took off just before that. As soon as I landed, there were oh, dozens of, all the engineers were there. And the first one picked me up and whizzed me around. And then the other one picked me up and whizzed me around. And I said, just a minute, I'm gonna be sick. What's happening? Why are you whizzing me around? Peace has been declared. You can take that mosquito back. We don't want it. I was just terribly relieved. Who wasn't that it was that it was you know over because the Japanese thing was still going on, um, and the work began to um, slow down. Of course, um, but you could hardly wish the war to go on, could you? So that we could have lots of work. Well, I, I was very wicked, really. I could have wished the war had gone on longer because I was enjoying myself so much, and I knew that I was doing a job and flying aircraft that I, I'd never fly again. And I came back to Gloucestershire and I felt really devastated, a great hollow, you know. I thought, what now? What am I going to do with the rest of my life? Nothing will ever really live up to those wartime experiences. These women are dangerous. Approach with caution. Handle with care. Bad girls. Tonight at 9, ITV1. Give this man a single hair from your head and he would know all about you. But how well does he know himself? I'm Joe Donovan, Forensics Investigation Unit. You suffer from a severe medical condition. I did. So, our new boss is a bit of a nutcase. Now he's looking to save his reputation. Try and keep him in the real world this time. I want to know what you think you're doing. I'm trying to find out who killed your dad. He can find the truth. What are you looking for? Clues. In a single drop of blood. What are you looking for? Now that's a clue. But what he can't see... Church lead. ...is that his marriage... You hardly ever look at me these days. ...is collapsing. Is everything OK between you two? ...right before his eyes. I'm here, I'm here. No, you're not. Not the Joe I loved. New drama starring Tom Conti, Donovan, Sunday at 9, ITV1. Smoking kills over 8,000 people a year in the Southwest. The government plans to ban smoking in public places, but will it succeed in cutting the death toll? Smoking is a very simple pleasure, and a lot of my patients would say, please don't take it away from me. West Eye View counts the cost of smoking next Tuesday at 7.30. Great interest was shown by large numbers of visitors at the ATA pageant at White Waltham near Maidenhead. To celebrate the tremendous achievements of these unsung travellers of the skies, the ATA staged a great air show in September 1945. Friends and families attended to see the many types of aircraft flown by the organisation and heard Lord Beaverbrook, the former Minister for Aircraft Production, declare, the ATA pilots were soldiers fighting in the struggle just as completely as if they had been engaged on the battlefront. And with that pat on the back, the ATA ceased all operations disappearing as abruptly as it had arrived. November 1945, the Air Transport Auxiliary just packed up and went home and it was just as though it had never been. But then, you see, after the war, the war ended, they had their garden party and then everybody clapped their hands and they all went home. But isn't that rather a good thing? I mean, it's, that's typical of the, the way these things work. There's no bureaucracy there to keep it going or to hang on to it, jobs and so on. They're all there for a specific job, and people jumped in to fulfill that job in the early part of the war, and I think as soon as that job had finished, the high command, at least of ATA, said, well, there's no point in just carrying on this for the sake of it. Let's pack it up quick. The 600 pilots of the ATA clocked up over 30 million air miles and carried out more than 300,000 aircraft movements during the war. Yet despite these tremendous achievements, many women found it particularly difficult to get jobs as pilots afterwards. Once again, it was men who were the first choice. At the end of the war, 
There were hundreds of men leaving the Air Force and they all wanted to fly again, those that weren't killed, that is. And so there was no earthly hope for a woman to get a job. Then I answered an advertisement. This was about February 46, I said, for a test pilot job. So I thought of a thought of a fan. And uh, I don't know whether they made a mistake or something, but they, I mean, I didn't say miss, but I gave them lots of clues like when I was at school and then. And there was a sort of usher, whatever you call him, outside showing people in to the boardroom. And he came to me and he said, this is a job, this is um, for a job as a test pilot. I said, I know. <laughs> and he went inside and a shriek of laughter came out, I can remember that. And I suppose they had to see me, you know, as I was on the list for them to see. And so, um, and I got first place on the reserve against all the RAF people. And then, of course, all hell broke loose in high places. We're not having a woman test pilot, blah, 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 blah. And, of course, they won in the end. While some ATA pilots struggled to establish a post-war flying career, others, like Jackie Mogridge, joined the RAF Volunteer Reserve. I was the only girl in the west of England to join the RAF VR then. And uh, the instructor said, I'm going to take you up in a tiger moth. I don't think they bothered to look at our log books. And this examiner took me up. He was an oldish man, a bit grumpy. So he said, all right then, let's see you fly straight and level. Let's see you do a gentle turn. Let's see you do this. All right, next time you come, we'll, we'll start um, climbing and gliding. And I didn't say a word. So we came down and then he went and he said, right, I'll go and sign your log book in then. And I had afternoon tea with my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, and my baby in the mess. Uh -huh. I didn't realise he didn't do that sort of thing. They told me soon enough after we had the tea, and then he came rushing back, and he was livid, this instructor. He said, how dare you? I said, I'm so sorry. Uh, have I done something wrong? I thought he was going to tell me off for having been having tea there, but it wasn't that. He said, I've just looked at your logbook. You're an ex-ATA pilot, he said. You've got more hours than I'll ever experience in a lifetime. Why didn't you tell me? You made me feel such a fool teaching you how to fly straight and level and doing this and doing that. What do I say? I can't say to him, I'm an ATA pilot, you know, I've got... I wouldn't have dared. I spent my whole life apologising for my presence. Despite her modesty, Jackie achieved great success as a commercial pilot. She ferried Spitfires to Burma and the Middle East and later became the first British woman pilot to be employed as an airline captain. Diana Bonato Walker may have allowed her own pilot's license to lapse, but being on the ground hasn't lessened her commitment to encourage others to take to the skies. I'm now president of the local air training corps unit, which is at Red Hill, and it's a very strong unit. They've got about 70 or more young people there, who are wonderful young people. And they're all very key and they're very smart. Thank you very much, Police Sergeant. Stand the squadron at ease, please. Squadron, stand back! Ace! Would you like to inspect your squadron? Thank you very much. I think it's very important that the young should have a sense of history to look back on and to realise that you can do anything you want to do, especially in the, in, if you want to. Petrol on. Living proof that age is no barrier to flying, Johnny Jordan has lost none of his wartime zest for adventure. Contact. Since the war, I've been going around doing aerobatics, uh, around all these air shows, and uh, I've got whole, I'm uh, Boeing Stearman. When I get the opportunity, I go up and give it a blow around but uh, it's just really to keep my hand in, you know. I love aerobatics, doing aerobatics, that's good fun. And I used to try all of them. <laughs> Including doing the stunts in a Biggles film. Alongside stunt work, Johnny also used his steerman for crop spraying. 
That is, until one too many close encounters with a bridge. Yeah, well, when you're prop spraying, you're flying two feet from the ground. So, if you see a bloody great bridge anywhere, it's no problem to fly under the bridge, which I've always been inclined to do. And uh, I got caught doing it once or twice, and the last time they got my number, somebody did. Uh, also, the prop tips exceed the speed of sound, so it makes a hell of a row. And uh, so I got done over that, and uh, I had my licence taken away, which is very sad. Uh, the worst thing has happened to me. <laughs> Losing his licence, aged 78, hasn't grounded him altogether, although now he has to take a qualified co-pilot with him whenever he has the urge to take to the skies. And another terrible thing is I just didn't realise I was so old until it was my birthday about a fortnight ago. <laughs> I've, since then, I've said to myself, you know, you're bloody 82, and I uh, just can't get used to, used to it at all. But uh, it's absolutely frightening when you suddenly realise you are 82. <laughs> what do you mean? Like? Bloody awful. Well, you know what they say. What? Any landing is a good one as long as you can walk away from it. <laughs> <laughs> do you think we'd make film stars? Oh, no, I think it's highly doubtful. <laughs> Stardom may have passed them by, but the spirit of the ATA still burns bright in the remaining veterans who get together for a memorial flight at RAF Lynham each year. We spent our formative years, if you like, in ATA, and the friendships we made then meant a lot to us because we were all doing the same job, a certain amount of danger, and it's very nice to go back to the reunions and, and see, see some of them every year and count up the ones who are still coming and who can't anymore. But yes, it means a lot to me to keep in touch with the few of us that are left. There's no doubt about it that ATA affected my life in, in the days during the war so much that I still see those days clearly today. Uh, it made such an impression on me. I lost some very good friends uh, during that period I was serving. I'll never forget them. One place where they are never forgotten is the ATA Association's annual reunion where veterans, their families, and modern-day RAF officers celebrate the ATA's wartime achievements. And I always did and always will salute your ability, your adaptability, your flexibility, and your courage in doing the things that you did. ATA should be remembered as a unique organization that made a great contribution to this country in World War II. It was a sort of organization in many ways you always hoped would go on and on, but of course it didn't. I don't think so quickly. I don't do anything so quickly. I'm really an old codger. <laughs> and that, yet as I... It, say once before, even old birds fly. So there's nothing to stop me flying if somebody give me an aeroplane. It, it was the happiest time of my life because as a pilot, we were free to do what we wanted to do because that was what I call heaven flying. Sadly, Jackie Mogridge passed away a few months after filming. For such a free spirit, whose life was so closely bound up with being in the skies, a memorial flight has been organized to scatter her ashes from the wings of a spitfire she ferried during the war. And I read a book once called Anyone Can Do Anything, and I thought, well, I'll try. My mother took me up for a flight when I was 14. Oh, and I nearly died of fright. I was terrified. And my mother said, you can't be a pilot, dear, if you're frightened just going up as a passenger. I said, yes, I am. I'm going to be a pilot. 